its body other than the face itself. There are in fact four different types of, uh, you know, what we think of as Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Very wide, pronounced nose. There was also a very ominous uh, odor. Phase one is to identify opportunities. I walked into a small clearing uh, and less than 10, 15 feet away from uh, this enormous creature and uh, it scared the living hell out of me. Phase two is conducting investigations both of witnesses and locations. Size of the thing, it was, you know, four or five feet across the shoulders. Phase three is profiling research areas, what's there, how they move, feeding, things like that. About eight feet tall, I guessed around 800 pounds, it was massive. I had no idea that anything like that existed. Phase four is create an intercept plan. I decided to shoot in the air to see if maybe it would scare it off. Phase five is the intercept and resolve the issue phase. It didn't do anything, didn't react. And then I heard a noise from my right rear and from out behind some brush come another one and walked over by the first one. That's when I decided to do what the dog did. I took off running. Welcome to Witness of the Unknown. Hello everyone, I'm speaking with Richard today. Richard, how are you, my friend? I'm doing really well, Will. How are you doing today? I'm good. I've been busy working in the backyard. I'm all sweaty and dirty, but <laughs> here I am. <laughs> yeah. we, we had a big... Yeah, it's, it's, we had a it's big, raining over here in Idaho. Oh, no. See, we have one of these big... Um, I can't think what the plant's called. It's a big bush that climbs up on a trellis, and it's, mm -hmm. it's huge. And, of course, the wind here really blows sometimes, and the thing blew over down onto the next level, and we were out there trying to cut it up and, and dispose of it. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> enough, of, enough of my yard work. Um, let me just have you go ahead and start from wherever you want to start, and the microphone is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, opening day hunting season started uh, October 10th, and I dropped my kids off at school and took off to the hills to go see if I could not run something down real easy. And um, I drove all the way up into the top of the mountains where I know where a reservoir is, and I hit a BLM area that they've all got it fenced in. It's good hunting, and I crossed the little fence there and started walking down the road. I got about two miles in and started to swing to the left a little bit, kind of doing a little fish hook, sort of making my way back in the direction of, of the road. And I got back in there and I stopped for a second and I started hearing uh, some weird garbling, some the garbling sounds. So I, I just froze and just stood there for probably 10 minutes. And there, it, the, the range of bird calls um, it, it was uh, pretty amazing. The the one that really got me the most was like the 300 pound um, magpie. That was that was uh, something. I knew I was in there by myself, and I just had a little 6 mm. So I was I wasn't feeling all that safe. So I just started to slowly inch my way back up over the ridge line. And once I got to the top, I I turned around and looked back down in there, and there was a some little meadows and little finger meadow that ran around there. And I figured that whatever was making those sounds were back inside that tree line. So I, I worked my way to, away from them and I started to head back toward the reservoir. And then by that time, all of this walking and all, and all it, it was getting around noon. So I started to think about moving back toward the road and I got back to that BLM fence, climbed under it 
and got on this ATV trail, and I just I looked at it, I go, well, yeah, this good solid ATV trail, it's going to take me right back to where I need to go. So I started following it, and it curled around and started heading back to the right. And, boy, I'll tell you, inside those woods where that ATV trail went, it, it was spooky. It was almost like walking down a green tunnel. And when I got into that middle of that, it was it was darker and it was a lot quieter and it it was kind of spooky. So I kept walking, sort of power walked my way out, and once I saw the the um, the shoreline of the reservoir, I kind of relaxed a little bit and like, okay, I made it, you know. So I walk up to the edge of the, I get out of the woods and I'm standing there at the top of the shoreline. And I'm looking around. And I couldn't believe it. I came out right at the very, very tail end of the reservoir. I've never been back in there before. I've always wanted to go over there, but I've never really been back in there. So I'm standing there looking, and I go, okay, the truck's to the left. So I start, I go down a little ways and, and take a left, and I'm walking along, and there's some logs laying down from where they've fallen out of the tree line. And I look down, and I see a print. A beautiful print. It was just nice, nicely formed and shaped. And see, I've been doing this for six years, uh, bigfooting, and I've never found a, a track that I really, really, really wanted to cast. I've been waiting for the, you know, the the perfect track with the toes and the mud and all of that. Well, I found it. I finally found it, and I'm looking at it, going, "Holy smokes!" And then I turn my eyes up, look up the hill a little ways, and there's another one right off to my left. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's two of them here. So I'm looking. At, I All I had was my camera. I never carry casting equipment or anything like that when I'm hunting. So I just had my pocket camera. So I took a, out, took some quick snapshots of it. I go, oh, man, I'm going to come back here tomorrow and cast these suckers. So I, I take off and eventually work my way back to my truck. And I had to cross a slough to get in, you know, on onto the other side. And then I drove home, and, and then the next day came, and I went to the um, the hobby shop, and I bought some plaster of Paris. I put myself together a casting kit, and I went back up there thinking I was only going to cast a couple of tracks. So when I got back to the spot, I, I drove up, got back to the spot. I mixed it all up, started pouring my cast, and in the first cast and just as I was pouring the first cast a rock came flying out of the woods and landed next to me and I heard the thud I didn't see the trajectory but I heard the thud and I like what a rock and I lifted my head up and when I lifted my head up I heard something go crunch 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 it just ran off back into the woods and I like oh my god I go really and I was back in there by myself on that second day too so I'm like, oh, boy, you know, this is, uh, here I am. Well, I'm out in the open, so I don't think they're going to rush me out in the open. So I just kept casting, and I cast those two tracks. And, and once I got done, I put my casting material down, and I signed in there and go, well, I've got at least an hour or so to wait. And um, I'm going to walk around a little and see what else I can see. So and when I came out of that trail and turned left and found the tracks, I didn't um, – I've never been to the right of that trail. So I turned around and I went back that direction, got up over a little rise and came down back to the beach. And there were tracks everywhere. They were in the mud. They were not in the mud. They were all over the top where it was hard pan. And they were all, and then it went down it towards the edge of the reservoir, but there, they were everywhere. There were trackways, um, crisscrossing each other and I just I stopped and, and I started looking around my feet and I'm like God I'm right in the middle of everything you know there were tracks all around me everywhere what were the and dimensions I, of those prints? I I started to uh, take pictures and I see that that's, that was see that was my inexperience that day that would be on a Thursday um, I didn't have a dang tape measure which was a horrible mistake it could have been really costly but 
I took as many picks as I could of those trackways. I picked, took as many picks of them as I could. And then I came back the Friday with my wife because I wanted a, a witness because here it is. All of these tracks are laying out on this beach. I looked at the weather station and they said that rain was coming Tuesday or Wednesday. And I like, Oh my God, you know, I got to get up there and get all of this information within the next four days. So I brought my wife with me Wednesday or Friday so that I would have a witness. And we, you know, she took pictures of me with the trackways and all of that. And, and on Friday I came back with a tape measure and I took pics of every single track, all the different sizes, the sizes were um, six inches. I only found three or four of the six-inch tracks because I figured um, after looking at how they were scrambling around, and I've, we, I laid string down on the trackway so I could see who was going where. Um, that little six-incher, it, it had to have been an infant because I only found a few, and I thought that, well, the 13-incher was right next to it all the time, and I think the 13-incher was a female, and it was carrying that uh, the six-inch. So they, and then they set him down and let him run around a little bit, and then they picked him back up. I found a 6-inch, an 8-inch, a 10-inch, a 13-inch, and a 15-inch track. Sounds like a bunch of uh, youngsters. A very... Yeah, yeah, small a small group of um, Sasquatches, a young group, but, you know, they had a, a few older juvies with them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it was amazing. And the thing, after I got um, the pics of the links, I started doing uh, the stride measurements, and the 6-incher had a 24-inch stride, the 8-incher had a 31-inch stride, the 10 incher had a 39 inch stride, and the 13 incher had a 49 inch stride, and the and let's see, the 15 incher had a 56 inch stride. So, you know, th this to me, this is incredible data because I was lucky enough to find these smaller tracks, uh, you know, different sizes, and and you can kind of look at their growth patterns by measuring those tracks and strides. Yeah, it's seldom um, I've get, come up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, it, yeah, so, no, go ahead. It's seldom we get that, you know, that kind of data from young ones, especially from you know size to size like that. Oh, it it was incredible when I saw it. I, I knew instantly what was there, you know, as far as data goes. I was like, oh my god, you know, I have to get all these measurements. So that Friday, I did all of that, and I was casting on Friday also. Um, uh, on on the Thursday when I, when I went back, I casted um, seven, and then on Friday when I went back, I casted about eight tracks. So um, those, it, it's from from what my chart says and what what I've got all of this written down. It, for every two inches of their foot growth, they're gaining seven inches on their stride length, seven to eight inches on their stride length. That's uh, that's pretty interesting because I did a, a chart and I charted it out and, and I, all the way to a 20-inch track and a 20-inch track, according to that um, to that data, is a 73 and a half inches or just say 74 inches for a 20-inch track on a stride. Yeah, that kind of goes pretty with big when you when you look at what John Green and Renee DeHinden put together. And, and Bob Titmus many years ago about the tracks in Bluff Creek. They talked about actually. And people should understand the difference between step and stride. And I put it in my first book. When you go from heel to heel, from two consecutive tracks in a line, in other words, you get a, a, a or let's say a right foot, and then the next track is a left foot, that's actually the yeah. step. It's one arc swing of, the, of one leg. Let's say uh, you go from mm -hmm. one right foot to the next right foot, that's actually the stride. And, and you would do the same thing. I see. You measure either from heel to heel or toe to toe. That's how you get a real accurate mm -hmm. uh, measurement on those. Oh, cool. Okay, that's good because I've, I've got the, uh, I got picks of those, uh, the right foot, the left foot, and then the right foot on forward. Um, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's a good distinction that people really need to understand. Yeah, everybody for years has called, called it stride, and, and there really is that distinction. But good work. I mean, you did a good job it, on that. Thank you. I, that's uh, it was a. Uh, I just 
I knew I had to get it down because I, you know, that, this is a once in a lifetime thing for, for a guy like me, you know, I, I may come back, you know, next year and find more trackways in the, in and around the same area. But this, this is an amazing discovery. It, it just gives a, because now I can start charting these particular individuals and see just how, how bit much they grow from year to year. If I can keep, keep on it and, and, and keep finding them, this could be really a bonanza of information. And, and I will tell you, the growth rate is faster than humans. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the, let's see. Um, while I was doing that uh, measurements, my uh, on Friday when my wife was with me, I, she, you know, she was just standing there watching me and I go, well, why don't you, you know, walk down, you know, down the reservoir ways and go up over that little rise right there. I can still see it. So don't worry. I'm, you know, nothing's going to happen because I had a pistol with me and in case of any other animals come out, but uh, she walked down there and she went up over the hill and pretty soon she's yelling for me, you know, Dick, Dick, come here, you know, because my, my wife calls me Dick. Most my friends call me Richard, but she calls me Dick. She says, Dick, Dick, come here. And I, okay. And I drop my measurements and I walk over there and sure enough, she found some more tracks on the other, other hump of the hill, but they were older. They were a lot older. They were washed out from a rain. <clears throat> you, the, the fine detailing was washed out, but you could still see that they were tracks, you know, Sasquatch tracks. They still had that, that distinctive shape. So I went back and got my, tape measure walked over there and laid it down I go oh yeah that's the 10 incher right there and then up uh, yep, here's the 13 incher you know because that's what we're calling them and and um and I said oh well, I have to go back and finish doing this just keep keep looking around and so I went back finished all of my measurements um and then I walked back to her and boy was she excited you know you know my wife was you know she's kind of a a 60, 40, um, type of a skeptic, you know, but now she's a hundred percent on, on board. She, she is right there. She knows it. She knows it's real. She's found tracks. She's seen all of that. So there's, there's no, uh, no doubt in her mind. And that was on that Friday. So, um, a, I left, got back into town. Then that next Saturday, I didn't go back. I was calling people because I was on a, a hardcore timeline. I like, man, there's rain coming. I got to get, I got to get this stuff done. And what I was doing with my casts was I was leaving them overnight. I cast them good, put a, a bag, one of them shopping bags over them and then um, put rocks around them so they wouldn't blow off. And I would leave them completely overnight. I was taking a big risk that someone wasn't going to come along and find them. You know, some other hunter would find them and then boy, the gig would be up. But I, I took that risk and that Saturday I made calls. I got a hold of uh, you and, and a couple of other guys. And, um, there was one guy up in, uh, um, Rathdom, Idaho. It's north of me about 130 miles I've been out with him before in the woods and we've been squatching and I invited him down. I go, Glenn, you got to come down here and see this. This is a once in a lifetime thing to see, you know, just come on down. And so he came down on Sunday and we went out and I, I had, I had had like 17 casts by that time, you know, and, and I just said, Glenn, pick out one of these prints that you want, any one of these prints and just pick it out and we'll cast it. And you can take it home. And he's like, okay, you know, so he picked one out and I cast it for him. And, and then later on, uh, we left that Sunday and I cast, oh, three or four more of really nice ones. And then, um, Monday I went back and picked up all of my last of my casts, uh, got the last of my video, um, took a few more pictures and, um, boy, I was lucky because Tuesday and Wednesday it just rained like crazy up there, and and it, I'm I haven't been back since, but I I know that that it's it's whacked them pretty good. It had to have because it was just pouring hard, like like being in a shower pouring. 
and I got lucky, but I, I, I pulled it off and I came out of there with 24 total casts. Two of them, um, they were so thin because they were on top of that hard pan and, and it was just getting towards the end of my casting material. I'm just standing there with, you know, like a third of a bucket of casting material looking around for trash just to cast, just to get it out of my bucket so I can clean it. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the, the situation I was in at that time. I was so cast rich. I wasn't really knowing, okay, uh, maybe I ought to go try. <laughs> it was, it was, I was in a weird position. <laughs> and that's the way it is, too. I mean, you know, casting is few and far between. You know, people think, oh, you yeah. go out there and just find all kinds of stuff, and it's it's rare actually. But uh, you have it to. It is be, rare. You have to be prepared. And you have to really take advantage of what there is when you have it. Yeah, yeah, and I cast a couple of those with that last little bit, and then a Monday when I went back to get them, I was trying to pull them up out of the ground, and um, they cracked in the middle, and and they really bummed me out. I was I was like. 22 for 22, and then those last two that I tried to get out of the ground, they broke in half, and I'm like, oh, God. Actually, that's uh, okay. I, I can tell you how to repair those, and it's not uncommon. Okay. It's not uncommon with Bigfoot tracks. Wow, good. You know, I noticed that because in uh, that's why I fill in some of the ones that had the big mid mid tarsal break in the middle of them in my in the print uh that part was fairly thin so i just kept piling it on until it thickened uh, mm -hmm. up a little bit so when i did get it out it, it, they came out really nice uh i've got some of the most amazing it it one of them looked either like they were running on their knuckles mm -hmm. or they were running on their tippy toes you know how there it looked like uh, a t the f the toe print of the front of the foot, but then there was absolutely no heel. It, it was it just it looked like they were running on their tippy toes, kind of with their heels up in the air. Mm -hmm. And and I and I got a couple of of those uh, casts too. Or you think maybe, those were so? Un you think maybe running yeah, out of fours maybe, in the in their hand I, actually? I do. Nails. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I I looked at it, you know, and it looked like you know, God. It, 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 I'll, you'll have to see it. It's just an amazing cast. That one was really uh, interesting and unusual. I've, I've never seen it like that before. Um, I've got one where the, the foot went into the mud and then the toes slid down a ways. And, and then when it, the, the uh, print bottomed out on the bottom and then they, they lifted their foot back up, it had a, a, just a huge mid-tarsal um, dome in the very middle of that one. I got that one cast really well. That was a deep print, and it took the cast really, really well. Yeah, that that was a good one. Um, that was very unusual, too. The the 15-incher, I only got one of him, or, and he was the one that was running flank duty along the edge of the reservoir, uh -huh. and his he, he must have weighed Wow, I mean, he had some weight in him because his feet went down into the mud so deep that it was really difficult to get a cast out of that. You know, I had to find one where he was coming back up and onto the top part of the reservoir where it kind of, um, the the mud was a lot harder and, and his print was a lot more discernible. But I only was able to get one of, of him. But most of the other ones, a 13 incher, I call her big toe. Um, she's got this really weird oversized toe on both of her feet. And um, it, it's so unusual looking. It's, I just I just started to refer her to as big toe when we were, when we were out on the beach talking about it. I go, you know, here's a trackway of big toes. And, and I, I took pictures of it, and it shows clearly their heel going over the top of their feet and then placing it in front of their toes, or the heel over the toes and the heel over the toes mm -hmm. as they walk. It, it's, I got some really nice uh, trackway photos of those, too. Very nice. It showed the very straight directional. Yeah, and then some of them, though, when you get into that mud, that heavy mud, you can see where their, their feet are not going over the top of them, but they're kind of... Is to keep their balance, I suppose, uh, is their 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 feet was walking somewhat side to side. 
not not a whole lot like ours do, but it was somewhat like that. When you look at the tr uh, trackway pictures that I have, you can kind of see it. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to give you. I'm gonna have to send you all of these pics that I took so that you can see a every bit that I saw instead of just that little snippet that I have on my uh, on 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 that. Yeah, that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's see. As far as the six incher goes, I got two good casts of them. Most, the only one that I didn't get a left right of was the fifteen incher. Mm -hmm. All the rest of them I got really good left right um, combinations of their footprints. I think the juveniles, especially the young ones, are less cautious than the adults. Or the fifteen mm -hmm. inchers probably was probably the adult among that group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they, he was an adult. Just the, the wideness of his footprint told me that he was more likely male. Mm -hmm. um, the six inch and the the, the eight and the ten incher, they kind of they kind of look male, but the thirteen is definitely female. It's long and narrow. It's very very narrow, and and that thirteen inches and long with her big toe up there. That's uh. She, it looks it looks really it really odd. It's a it's a very interesting track. It stood right out though, boy. When I looked at that, it almost looked you know like it was a deformed in some way. But mm -hmm. the the toe that great it's just like this great big toe, and then some smaller ones on the side. It was, it's pretty cool looking actually. I got some nice pictures of it. Yeah, um, I put my print next to the the 13 incher and I took a picture of my print it my mine only is like nine nine to ten inches long and you can see that <laughs> I, I might have broken through the mud maybe an eighth of an inch tops at the very most and when you look at uh, the 13 inch track she's brought she's sunk all the way down into there uh, clearly an inch or more deep Right. So she weighs way more than I do, way more than I do. I weigh 200 pounds, and you can tell the difference. I, I spoke with my content that I referred to as Mr. Black not too long ago, and we were talking about things like that, and he said uh, that the weights of these creatures are almost always vastly underestimated. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that. I mean, you, you look at the, uh, the eight incher. And the ten answer, he these guys are sinking down into the mud way further than I am too. Right. Um, yeah. On, on that one picture, let's see. Uh, let's see on the one that I have posted online. There, where my uh, that's Big Toe's print right there. It's uh, the picture right directly above the uh, the one the dark picture that has the set plus seven on it. Mm -hmm. There's um, there's a, a picture of Big Toe's uh, print right there. She's got that it's just right directly above it and then there's another trackway see somebody I showed somebody this picture and when they looked at that pic they saw that trackway that way and then they missed that there was another trackway cutting across hers and they thought that it looked like a human standing there with their feet spread apart but in actuality it was her trackway and then his trackway that cut across hers and it came close to stepping on her print but mm -hmm. he, he didn't do it and it, it kind of looks like a human stance but it's not it's two different trackways right, right. that ran that ran through there it was a and I, I pointed that out to him and he uh, his friend he's He's a friend of um, Matt Moneymakers, oh. and he and he sent, <laughs> yeah, and he he yeah, and he sent the pics to to Matt, and Matt said that they were squatch. Was, he said, "Well, are these authentic?" Just look at this pic, and Matt looked at him and said, "No, that's Sasquatch." But that's that's the only the only people that have um, found, that found out about it that early before I talked to you. Mm -hmm. Well, very um, interesting. I, Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm going to go back there. I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on this place. Um, it rained really hard, so it's it's washed them out pretty good. I'm going to let let it settle down because we're still right in the middle of hunting season, and I don't know how many people have been back in that area. Usually, not many because when you come in 
from the, re the, the reservoir side, there's a slough that you have to cross to go down the beach. And that stops people dead in their tracks. Um, I, I wore rubber boots and I crossed that slough and, and, it, and I kept going, but <clears throat> I, I crossed that thing seven or eight times last week. So, <clears throat> but, um, there, there hasn't been very many people in that area. I, I was, um, casting on, uh, let's see. Yeah. It was Sunday when I went out there with the Glenn and I, I was going in and a guy and his um, kid were coming out just as we were pulling in, they were coming out of the woods uh, along that BLM fence line. And I stopped and I had my, my casting box with all of my stuff and my backpack. And I, we, I didn't have a rifle or nothing. He kind of looked at me funny and I go, Oh, we're just going back there to take pictures. And he, he laughed and I go, well, did you walk the loop? You know, the one that I walked and he goes, no, I didn't walk that loop. I got the little guy here and I it would have tired him out. And I go, Oh, you just walked along the ridges a little bit. But I'm trying to find a fish to see if he went down to the edge of the reservoir because I still had casts laying on the ground with oh. baggies over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, well, have and then he he told me, oh no, we just walked along the ridges and we saw a couple deer, but we just came back. And I go, oh good. I'm secretly I'm going, whew, miss <laughs> miss that one. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny people don't really know if they haven't cast prints. You have to leave them in the ground for a couple hours for them to harden up enough mm -hmm. to dig them out. <laughs> and you have to dig them out. You can't just lift them unless they're in sand or something like that. No. I, I was prying them out of the ground like I was digging landmines out. Yeah, exactly. You that's, know, that's I, 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 do too. I got my knife down in there and kind of cut around it like that, you know, hoping to not hit the trip wire, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. I come up with this big glob of dirt, you know, and, and it takes me a couple of weeks to get yep. it cleaned properly. And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what i did <laughs> but you know if you yeah. don't, if you don't do that you're not going to get a good print so that's right that's right um boy some of them are just i mean absolutely pristine you can see the dermal ridges in them oh that's good then. you know that's yeah. oh yeah th th there's you there's a couple of them that were just uh you can clearly see the dermal ridges in, in them and i i uh I'm, I'm I'm praying that when I get them cleaned up that you can still see that because, oh, boy, those are really cool. Those my, uh, those are like, uh, my, yeah, my they're like fingerprints. My anthropologist friend would be really interested in seeing those too. Yeah, yeah. Mm, you know, maybe we can uh, arrange for him to look at the originals too. Yeah, I'll talk to him and I see. Yeah. Because I, I'm, I'm really glad that that you you got in in uh, in line first. Because I'm only going to make a couple of copies of them because I don't want to take a chance of of hurting the the originals. But right. yeah, they're 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 uh, they're quite something to have a range of sizes like that in one spot. Oh my God! And and then the one that gets me the most is I, I when I found that little six inch track, I sat there and looked at it like. Are you kidding me? That deep down in the mud and that perfect, just such a small little track, I, it just totally blew my mind. And I started to look at tracks, different different tracks of people that, that have track collections and have published some of the tracks. And, you know, that, that six-inch track is rare. Yeah. It, it is so rare that... I, I don't know if anyone has one that's six inches long that's as, as well as that one is. I, I, I'm not bragging like that. I'm just saying, like, holy cow, this is this is really rarity here. I, I just sent you a text with a, a picture of the smallest one I have in my private collection. It's it's probably less than four inches in length, but that's extremely rare. That is just amazing, yeah. You know, and those guys aren't getting long trackways because they're just walking a little ways, and then they get they get picked back up. Yeah, this you know, this one, the adult was nearby, and a fifteen inch track, mm -hmm. and, and there was there was a line of tracks that walked. Well, a friend of mine sent it to me actually. Um, mm -hmm. It was walking by itself along in the mud along a lake. Um, yeah, but very interesting, very interesting stuff. I mean, and we're seeing a lot of juveniles yeah. this year. I've been telling that to people. We're seeing a lot more juveniles this year than we've seen in the past, so it's something to definitely mm -hmm. keep our eyes on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm planning on having a kind of like a 
camp out or um, nothing, nothing, you know, organized, you know, mm -hmm. as far as, um, you know, beach food or anything like that. I just want to invite some people over, you know, get about four or five researchers that are interested in this and, and just having uh, a, <clears throat> a camp out right there at that spot. Cause there's, there's a little glade kind of like a, um, a small little meadow that goes back up into the woods that are, that this beach is attached to. <clears throat> and I'm going to build a little fire pit up there. And then there's lots of places to place tents and just maybe have like a, a couple of day um, research gathering just to see if we can't find more tracks. I'd like to get there this summer with a couple of friends. Um, we're going to be going into Washington, but, you know, you're not too much further away, so. No, you're, no, you're, no we're not. Um, I, would, I would gladly take you there. It, it is, it's just an amazing spot. You can see where they sit, and they watch the deer for ambush sites. Mm -hmm. You know, you, there's there's little points that go out, and you can look left and right. And you can see all the way up and down it, and that's what I was doing originally when I walked down to the reservoir. Um, I started to walk along the the edge. After I found the prints, I started walking along. I went back to deer hunting, and I and I started looking for trackways of deer, and I'm seeing them. They're coming down out of the forest. They're, I there was uh, several game trails, and they were just coming down, getting their drink, and then heading back in. Oh yeah, there's uh, you know that the Sasquatch hunts those deer there. And on a couple of these pictures, you can actually see deer tracks that are going um, along the beach, also where these Bigfoot tracks are. You can see deer tracks in there. Right. Hmm. Um. When you come up. Um, try yeah. Let's see. Um, just try try and come up in as early in the day as you can, so you can spend as much time there as you possibly can. Because this the road down off of the mountain is is a nice gravel road. It's it's uh, maintained by the, the highway department. It's it's called. Uh, I'll just tell you offline. I'll tell you offline. Like, okay. About this. Well, that's great information, Richard. Um, and I'm sure that's it's always fascinating stuff. Uh, anything further before we wrap it up and talk offline? Um, no, uh, I'm I'm just thinking that you know finding this family group like that, uh, it, it's going to give us a, a really a great opportunity to to study this particular clan over the years because, you know, I, I believe and I, I really firmly believe that they have dropped anchor and they are hanging out right in that area. There is so much food there, the deer, the elk, there's fish. You know, I know they get fish out of that reservoir. I'm sure they do because the Forest Service stocks the darn thing. Right. And... And then it drops down to record low levels, and those fish are all caught, you know, at that low low tide, to, you know, to, so to speak. And yeah, there's a, it's a good place to be. I think they're, I think they're there. I think they're not going to move off too much. Um, it would be a really good opportunity for research in the future, just to see how how these things develop in their height and stride and. And step, I you know I never knew the difference between the step and the stride. That I, I learned that today from you, and that's really that was that's good. It's really good. Yeah, there's a lot it's, of information that that people I, I think they they're quick to say because it's something they read or whatever. But I mm -hmm. know, um, and I remember I got this from talking, of course, to John Green and Renee Dennett and those guys. You know, making <clears throat> excuse me, making a careful note of of those exact measurements and things so um i am a little little pickier when it comes to details like that because it, it's valuable it'll be valuable information for scientists you know who knows decades from now if we record it properly mm -hmm. um the trackways that uh, the first the one that my wife found and then the one that that i had found we backtracked those and and it took us right into this point um, 
uh, where where the the, the woods kind of came out and hung out over the edge of the reservoir, and it was all back in there. I didn't go back in there because I was by myself most of the time, or or with uh, um, her, and I just didn't want to go back in there and, and get into a confrontation, because I had felt that when we were there casting, um, they were watching us. I I just you know I had that feeling, and every time I go against that feeling, I always get burned. Yeah, you should and never, I, never just, go alone. No, no, your instincts are always usually correct. Mm -hmm, that's right. And uh, yeah, so so I I didn't go back in there by myself. I I know where they where, where their you know those trackways led right into the woods, and there were game trails back in there. Mm -hmm. There's some nice little spots where they could lay down. I when I was hunting, I found giant. I found beds up along the ridge lines. I didn't know whether they were elk beds or or what, but they were pretty big. I also found smaller beds that had deer dung around them, but mm -hmm. I found a couple of larger beds that, up there that I'm not going to say that they were Sasquatch, but right. they were pretty large. They were pretty large. I always take pictures and then put a question mark if I'm you know because maybe I'll talk to mm -hmm. an expert who knows you know something more than I do about that. Um, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of deer, elk, things like that. I mean, I'm pretty familiar with those animals growing up around those areas but um you know if, if it's a question i'll take a picture i mean why not these days you know especially with digital cameras you can take a lot of photos um and it yeah. doesn't matter where years ago you know i'm carrying film cameras and i have to be mindful of how many how many prints i have with me mm -hmm. and, you know not wanting to squander any if i needed the pictures yeah you know the video that i got and it, it was it's only about 15 minutes long um, when I was charging my camera, it, I, uh, I wasn't able to charge it all the way up because I, I was in the time straight in the morning. I had to run my kids to school and then I just grabbed my camera and dropped them off and took off to the woods. So when I got up there, I, I just got 15 minutes of, uh, of good video, but it, it's, it's good video. I followed those trackways, the muddy ones. I walked down there and just walked along them and just got a really good, uh, a good um, take on all of those tra those uh, deeper ones that were in the mud. Did you make a count yeah. of how many prints for each size there were? Um, I started to do that, and I didn't. I but there was there were so many uh, dis um, disappropriate numbers. Like I only found four of the sixes, um, the fifteens. There there was about. Um, 40 or 50 of those and then the eights and the tens and the thirteens they were everywhere mm -hmm. they were literally everywhere they, they were they were just running and you know you could see where their prints were stepping in the other guys prints you know they were they, they was just willy-nilly all over that beach yeah I, i've seen prints like that i counted the last time i found a good set of tracks like that a 15 inch print um I, I was only able to count around 100 tracks, but they were in a small area, and they went back and forth and around, and, and it was difficult yeah. to count them, but I was able to yeah. you know, ascertain that there were 100 prints there. Mm -hmm. I figured there was five individuals, and uh, there were approximately 30 or 40 prints of each, easily. So that that's why I said 150 in my in my uh, my um, story. It was... Right. Yeah, I... I 150, I thought was maybe lowballing it, but you know, yeah, and it's still and, a lot of tracks. And, and it's funny, still a lot of tracks. anybody out there, I mean, you know, you hear stories where people say, "Well, I found a few prints," or and I've actually talked to people who thought they were experts on the subject, who might have cast, you know, a dozen prints, and I asked them, "Did you did you follow the tracks forward? Did you follow the line backwards? Did you count how many there were?" Nope, wasn't important to them. Well. <laughs> You know, for legitimacy on a real line of tracks, yeah. there should be many, many prints over a long space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When I was taking pictures, uh, individual pic, um, still photos, I was trying to find um, the prints that had two or three different sizes 
in the picture. Mm -hmm. You know, so whenever they were really close together, I would take a picture of that because that's pretty rare. You know, when you see, you know, pics of, of tracks, they're usually solo. Right. And when you find different sizes around those, uh, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to get pics like that so that you can see that there were many individuals just in that one picture. Right, absolutely. No, that's you're mm -hmm. right. It is rare, and, and if you can do it, it's great. But it is seldom that you get something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's really rare. Um, you know, a lot of people are out there doing this, and it's feel I feel uh, like I say, and I feel both blessed and cursed because now where do I go from here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I I could probably help you with that. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting find. I, I'm just, uh, well, I get goosebumps when I think about it sometimes. Yeah. Well, very interesting. And I, I can't wait to come there and I, I had planned to but earlier, but my time has been so bad this past year, but I should have a little, little free time this coming year. Yeah. Yeah, when you when you get free up a little bit of time, come on up. I'll I'll uh, take you right to it. This is really, it's it's just a great spot. And, and in Idaho, man, it's, it's it seems like wherever I go, I'm running into them up here. If you go out and you're along a water source, you're gonna find something. I I can probably show you some things to look at that nobody else will be able to show you. And that's how I'm going to mm -hmm. leave it at that. I'll, I'll let people kind of fume over okay. that. But <laughs> awesome! I, I'll 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 uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Well, very and cool. I'm going to get a hold of you. I'm I'm going to get a hold of you when as soon as I get some of my stuff cleaned up, and I'm and, and then I'm going to get a hold of you so that we can work on getting those recasts. Because I I would like you to be involved in that too, if you could. Yeah, I'll definitely help you out with that. Uh, like I said, I I went through it. And, and there's there's some techniques to it, but I'll definitely help you with all that. Thank you so much. I oh, appreciate that. No problem. No problem. Any anything else or? Uh, no, I I think we covered it pretty good. It's uh, it's quite a fascinating find. It's when you know if more people can see this, I I think they're they're gonna um, maybe get an idea in their head that when they go out to research that. You know, go hit those reservoirs. Go hit those lake sites. Go look where they're where they're walking around. Yeah, De Hinden always of, told me to instead watch of following the, trails. De Hinden always told me to watch the waterways. That was that was his advice. Yeah. That's good advice. All righty, Richard. Well, listen, I'll wrap this up, and then you and I can chat a bit off the air. Okay. All right. Well, listen. Thanks again for this, and uh, and uh, folks, stay tuned. I'm sure we'll hear more from Richard. Thanks, everyone, for joining me this week. Be sure to tune in again next week as we explore another account from a witness of the unknown.